Hello everybody. This is the video about the lower limb bone and the bone today we're going to discuss today is about the femur bone. It is the longest and the strongest bone of the lower limb. Now, first of all, the first question about being a medical student and also helping in passing anatomy is how to hold it in an anatomical position and the second is that which type of side bone it is. Well, very simple. Let's study about how to hold it in an anatomical position. In an anatomical position, it is not going to be holding in a straight, but also in a little bit, it will be in slighting movement or in an oblique movement because it is going to join with the acetabulum in an oblique manner to form the hip joint, not straight. So always hold lightly in the slightly or in slanting position or in oblique position. So that was how you're going to hold it in an anatomical position. The second question is that how you're going to determine which side it is, whether it is on the right side or the left side. Very simple. You see this head of the femur? This is very important in determining the side determination of femur. If this head of the femur, it is m joining with the acetabulum of the hip on the right side and it is medially, then it is of the right side. And if it is joining with the acetabulum of hip joint from the lateral side and medial to the chest cavity, then it is of the left side. Well, right now the bone I'm holding, the side which we can identify, it is of the right leg. Because here it is the head of the femur which is on the medial side. And here it is going to meet with the acetabulum in this way and form the hip joint. So this bone is the right side. Similar, if you um, uh, issue your bones and see, they can also be on the left side or they can be on the right side. So that is it. Now coming to the general features of the femur. The first day is uh, that it is divided into two Ends. One is the upper end and the other is the lower end and in between the upper and lower end is this long elongated shaft. Let's study first about the head of the um, upper end of the femur. The upper end of the femur, it consists of this head of the femur and at the head of the femur, it consists of a fossa which is called as the uh, fovea. This is the circle, it is known as the then in between, then the next part is the neck. What is the function of the neck? The function of the neck is to for the attachment of the head of the femur to the shaft of the femur. Then you have the two trochanter. This is the greater trochanteric and this is the lesser trochanter. And on the posterior side, the greater and lesser trochanteric, they are united with one another by an intertrochanteric crest. And on the anterior side, the greater and lesser trochanter are united or joined with one another by intertrochanteric line. That is it. And on the posterior side where the intertrochanteric crest is present, you can see that there is a reference depression area. There is a tubercle formed and this tubercle is called as the quadrate tubercle. That was all for the upper end or the superior part or the upper part of the femur. Now coming to the shaft of the femur. This elongated part. It consists of three borders. One is the anterior border. Number two is the postmedial border. And number three is the lateral border. And it consists of the three surfaces. Number one is the medial surface. Then you have the lateral surface. And on behind this, and, uh, you can see this dark line. This is called as the linea aspera, which forms the posterior surface of the femur. Now on the posterior surface, on the upper end, there is another tubercle, which you can see here, this tubercle. This is called as the tub gluteal tubercle. And at the lower end, you can see that there is another surface, this surface surface. This is called as the popliteal surface for attachment of the popliteus muscles and ligaments. That was all for the shaft of the femur. Now coming to the distal or the lower end of the femur. As you can see that uh, there are two condylars. One on the medial side, this is called as the medial condyle. And one on the lateral side, this is called as the lateral condylar. And above the medial and lateral condylar is the lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle. And on the anterior surface, these two medial and lateral epicondyles, they are united with one another to form the articular surface of the patellar muscle. And on the posterior side, these two lateral and medial epicondyle, they are separated from one another by an intertrochanteric notch. That was it. Now how to know that which type of muscles have been attached? Let's study about that. Here you can see that at the greater trochanteric here there. Here two type of muscles are attached. One is the gluteus minimus muscle attached and number two is the insertion of the piriformis muscle attached. That is here. Then at you can see at below at the shaft here three types of muscles have been attached. 
One on the medial side is the vastus medialis muscle. On the lateral side is the vastus lateralis media. And in between them is the vastus intermedialis muscle. And here on the popliteal surface, another muscle is attached, which is the popliteus muscle and the genesis muscle. And then on the lateral condyle here, there is another muscle attachment attached. And that muscle, it is called as the ductor magnus muscle. So it is. So these were all about what type of muscles and ligaments have been.